All right, so one, welcome back. How the hell is it already December? Uh, the answer to that question is, it's not December, it's August. It's not August, it's April. Oh my god, am I leaving that in? Well, that's really fitting, because this ring, uh, being made and chosen from different materials, uh, I have a piece of purple heart glued to a piece of, I believe, oak. Uh, I have this pre-made copper ring, uh, this ring is, it has been dubbed a series of poor decisions. Uh, so I don't cheat, I don't choose that little seizure block. I, I go with this one. And this, oddly enough, not a poor decision. I'm getting rid of some of the excess on the outside. I am wondering in my head, how is it already April? And where did the last three months go? I don't know, and I don't plan to answer that question. I just plan to continue questioning it. Uh, so I take my little jeweler saw, and I make the square round, which is usually easier to deal with on the lathe. Um, it's not fun taking off big square corners on a uh, mini lathe, especially when it's, it's not supposed to be used for wood to begin with. This makes this process a little bit nicer for me. But this, this piece of purple heart, and I'm, I keep calling it oak. I think it's oak. Just because of the striations and whatnot. I got it in a big box of scraps. I will haunt, haunt and hunt uh, Etsy or... I don't really go on eBay anymore, but I go on Etsy. And people will have scraps of wood that are usually really good for this kind of thing. Scraps that are useless for almost anything else. Glue them together, make them into a ring. Make them into knife scales. Make them into anything. Uh, and there are plenty of Etsy people that have scraps of exotic woods. And sometimes you get lucky and they're like, I got a hundred of these things. Give me $40 and you can have a box of them. It's pretty nice. Also, probably not $50. So this part, going pretty well. It's a little slow going. Purple Hearts, uh, uh, Purple Hearts decently hard. This is a poor decision. <laughs> uh, this little bit has... That bit is not the sharpest in the world. It, I got some chew out, and then I got a lot of chew out. Breakaway? Uh, uh, a series of poor word choices is more like it. Uh, so I have to sand those off. Just to make it uh, nicer and... Honestly, it's it's already going to get sanded away anyway, but getting rid of it now gives me a better idea of what the thickness of the ring is going to be and that kind of thing. So, put it back in the lathe, make it go fast, and I want to make I want to make the inside diameter the same as the outside diameter of the copper ring that I had already made. Man, that was fast. And uh, you may be asking yourself, well, I'm sure he was checking in between each one of those passes. Yeah, I'm sure he was. But sometimes you get a little overzealous. And sometimes your ring is a little too loose. Gross. Uh, but this fit is absolutely unacceptable. It just falls out. Even with glue, it'll, it, it, would, it wouldn't work. So I decided to make a new ring. Now, this process, <laughs> there's another name for this ring. It's called Oops All Mistakes. Uh, <laughs> no, this, this time I remake the ring, but I don't measure anything. That was a mistake, but sometimes your mistakes can result in being lucky. And in this case, I was pretty lucky. Uh, so, just like you've probably seen plenty of ring makers make before, uh, you make a circle, you cut the circle off, and then you line up those edges. I like this method more than measuring out uh, certain distances, especially when I'm making a ring for practice. Uh, I just want a circle. And this gets me a circle at a relatively high speed and with decent accuracy and not too much cleanup. 
Uh, could it be better? Oh my God, it could be better. But that's that's flush enough for my money, and it it does it does work for me pretty good. Just like all the other times, you flux it, you turn off the light. There you go, and then you get it hot. And once you get it hot, you solder it. And you turn off the light mostly because you need the, um, you, you sort of need to see how red it's really getting. The camera makes it look a little bit more overcooked than it is. That being said, this, uh, this is sketchier with the lights on because you can't see how intense the glow is or isn't. I don't suggest it. And with a little time skip, we have a cool ring. Cooled down. I also think that it is rather neat too. Uh, but now that it's soldered together, hit it with a hammer until it is more round than you had had it before. Easy peasy. When in doubt, hit it with a hammer. And when in doubt, hit it with a hammer again. And repeat about a hundred times. Nice circle. Uh, it also tests your solder joint rather well. So, you know, it held. And it definitely has too much solder in there, so that's got it, it's got that going for it. And there we go. Now we have hand filing that <laughs> you will have hand filing forever. This is this isn't a video of mine without hand filing, and if there isn't any hand filing, just know that it's in my heart. So it'll always be there. And that doesn't mean we we don't have to speed it up anymore. I think I've gotten past the point where I feel like you need to see every little detail, which isn't true because I'm showing you 30 straight minutes of detail. <laughs> Another name for this ring, why did I do this? Uh, the answer is practice. I actually have an answer for that one. That one isn't entirely rhetorical. Uh, 30 straight days of trying to make a ring a day. I, I feel like I learned some lessons. I definitely took a break uh, that coming January for sure. That is, it's not particularly sustainable when it isn't your full-time job. Full-time job, I could probably make like 7, 10, 20 rings a day. Who knows? I could, get, I could get better if I just sat there and practiced. That's how practice works. Oh, so I, I guess I should talk about the thing I'm making and not just esoteric uh, musings about what practice does. But uh, here's an unfocused shot of me cleaning <laughs> the inside of the ring of oxidation. Uh, it, this would probably be more... It would probably be better served cleaning it off with acid first but I am not super patient and it takes I don't have a heating pot for my acid it's it it, it doesn't really work for me that's not copper my god I think that's bronze anyway I'm cleaning it and polishing it at the same time so <laughs> uh, oops all mistakes really uh, lends itself to the entire like process that surrounds this ring. If you made it to this video, then you made it to, uh, <laughs> yeah, here's the final name I have for this ring. Uh, and what decisions did I have to make for you to be watching this right now? The answer is I made the ring you click the video. And for that, thank you. Uh, and I will continue to make videos, even though it'll be very slow. So if you subscribe, you'll get more of this nonsense. Uh, it'll almost always be crafting. I don't know what the hell else I want to do, but uh, anyway, thank you. Click subscribe, like all that stuff. This isn't your first time on YouTube and Lord knows it's not mine. Uh, but I get the ring between hammering, filing, and fitting. The, r <laughs> the ring is now one piece. That was supposed to be a test fit where I could get it out again. I absolutely cannot get it out again so I guess I just committed and honestly that's rather pleasing I didn't the wood didn't break the woods even stronger too because it has um it's almost it's it's lamp two pieces laminated and the grain is opposite each other 
So there's perpendicular grains and they're glued together, making them stronger than they would be in any other direction. And they're now going to be attached to this uh, bronze band for as long as I remember it's bronze and not copper. Still, uh, super glue. Always super glue. Never, never don't put super glue and always keep your hand in front of the shot. Good job. And this is also a very similar reason as to why I have more super glue than I have fingerprints when I am making rings like this, uh, because I don't wear gloves. You should. Uh, if you were following this like a tutorial, maybe don't. Just use it to learn as learn from my mistakes. Don't do what I do. Do what I do better. <laughs> I think that's a fair point if you're a beginner, and if you are uh, more advanced than a beginner, then... I hope you are getting something out of this and thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> uh, I have been following some very interesting uh, ring makers and jewelry makers for a little bit. They're so impressive. It's really cool, and it's usually inspiring stuff like this. One of these days, I will have room to, to hammer more freely because I want to try some things like fully forged rings, uh, either steel or bigger pieces of copper that you forge out and then you forge little patterns and then like little heads. Like I have plans. I have ideas. It just, time is at a premium. The time being what it is, it's expensive. <laughs> so I sand it down the sides. I don't feel like I need to talk about going through the grits just because it, if you've sanded one thing, you've sanded a hundred things, and you will you will have gone through the grits on something by now. Uh, so, fun fact: these ring mandrels, uh, I got them from Patrick Adair. Uh, they're really good ring mandrels, but sometimes you're in between sizes on uh, whatever you're trying to make, and this ring happened to be a little too big and a little too small for, uh, and, and it was in between a size. This has been my preferred method for filling in that gap. Electric tape, but three pieces all the way up the sides. You avoid that, that wraparound thing and then having an overlap spot. And uh, it, this has been super clean. And it just takes up that last, like, I don't know, thousandth of an inch. I don't, I don't even know the measurements for it. Uh, that's not what those clippers are for, Adrian. Those are for wire. Why? Why? Anyway, <laughs> so I get a really nice fit. I don't mar the inside of the surface of the ring, and I I get it on the lathe. And now that it's back on the lathe, uh, you might be thinking to yourself, I haven't seen a mistake in a while. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. No injuries, nothing nothing bad. Um, my hand is further away from that, that chuck than it looks. Um, the little uh, handmade turning tool is doing doing as good a job as it can do but uh, it doesn't mean that it's perfect surprising absolutely no one the uh, the the brittleness of the purple heart is a little surprising I haven't really had it chip away like this uh, since I've been making these rings so Unbeknownst to me, right now, I am working against myself and creating a problem that I don't know that I'm going to have. I'm just trying to get the ring down to size, I'm trying to get it to thickness, and while I'm doing that, uh, again, I keep going back to this tool when I know that it's causing uh, this, this chip out, this break. And I don't know if there has been maybe a day between this when I've been working on other rings. I don't, I don't remember what got me to the point where I thought, this is a good idea, I'll try that again. I can't really feel the texture while it's spinning. I think it's, I think it's fine. I think the thickness is fine. Reading past Adrian's mind, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong and I was, I was just working through it. You have a long day at work, you think about stuff, you're like, oh, this is a good idea. Oh, I'm not too worried about it. I probably noticed it there and sanded it anyway, thinking I'll get through it. You'll see very shortly. Oh, God, my chair is turning. 
So I have already added super glue to it and I have this super nasty chip. There's, there is not a lot of things that you can do. So I went through the process of thinking, not just what can I do, but what, what, um, what would be the best way to go about what I'm about to do? I can't, I, if I sand down the ring any further, it's just going to be too little purple. It's going to be too thin for what I was trying to make. I get my tappy fingers just to let you know. So I make an executive decision. I'm going to cut a triangle out of that area. And very unme like uh, I scratch out sort of where I want to cut. And if you're wondering why I referred to myself as Adrian, and the, the channel name is Max Power Crafts, is because Max Power Crafts is the name of a, a tabletop uh, role-playing game character from Cabins and Killers, and he is a uh, salesman <laughs> of steel and of sorts. It's a long-running joke that isn't a joke anymore. I have had maybe a dream or two about being him before, so... I take, I take the spirit of that as how this channel got its name. Max Power Crafts, doing it the wrong way faster, and realizing that that's a Simpsons quote, uh, a, three years after I made that character, who was already a Simpsons reference. Doing it the wrong way faster, that's what this ring could be called. <laughs> Not just doing it the wrong way faster, but doing it the wrong way faster... And then having to go back and fix it, which makes it not faster at all. In fact, it makes it a, uh, some might call, a big old, big old pile of mistakes. Anyway, uh, talking, about, talking about what's going on while it's going on, uh, this little jeweler saw is working overtime while the camera focus is working, it isn't working at all. I finally get it down to the metal on both sides. Boop. And just like that. Super glue is strong, but it's brittle. And once you um once you take away the major like controlling forces, uh, the major things keeping it stuck together, super glue works in tandem with everything else. If you can get leverage on it, you can pop that shit off. I don't think I can say the same about PVA glue. PVA glue is so much more stubborn. So I'm just cleaning up these edges a little bit. Uh, since what I'm going to be trying, you'll be able to see through. Uh, <laughs> you'll be able to see through the ring. I wanted to get those little wood chips out. And if by any chance I sort of loosened the wood around the ring, that's going to be fixed in this process too. Uh, this is what I would like to call a really poor decision that worked out surprisingly well. So here I am making a dam or um, something to fill. And I'm using painter's tape because it won't stick, but it should make a clean enough seal that I won't have to worry about um, anything uh, going further than it needs to. It's going to be super glue. And while I am being very precious with this with this little dam and this idea, what I'm going to say is, looking back at it, I would do this completely differently. All the way down to the tape, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done the tape part yet at all. I would have I would have done something else, which you'll see somewhat shortly. Hmm. Are we just gonna stick on a? We're we're just gonna wait for this. What are we? What are you doing? Stop! Stop! Put it away. You're gonna keep holding on this shot. This is what we're doing right now. I have to talk with the editor. Anyway, this is what we're doing. We're gonna fill that dam with little pieces of opal. Also bought from Patrick Adair. 
uh, and some might say relatively misused. <laughs> uh, or um, squandered. I, I, I use I, I use what I think I have to use in the moment, but uh, honestly, it still works out and it's fine. I don't like wasting this stuff because that little, that little, I don't know, tenth of an ounce is just, it costs money. It's plain and simple. But what I want to make sure that I'm doing is I have little opal pieces from top to bottom. Anywhere that uh, I sand away that turns into, um, into free space. I want that to be like very, very clearly full of whatever needs to be. It is taking me a while too, longer than it should have for, I'm going to say good results for what they are, but the way that I would approach this, if I did it again, I would super glue individual small pieces down onto the ring first. Then I would put more super glue as a, um, as sort of a base, do it again and do it again and build it up like that. It would take more time. It would take more time initially, but this, this little uh, pile of mistakes that I'm making, this took a day or two to fully cure to the point where I could work on it again. This was a huge mistake. Oops, all mistakes that work out in the end you're still making mistakes, but you learn from them. And what I've learned is something that unfortunately I already knew. I knew that this would take forever to cure. I didn't know that it would take. So I didn't know it would take in the days category. So I started to get a little impatient and not just impatient. What I needed was to get this thing done. This had been sitting around for a far, far too long. So I hit it with accelerator, a lot of accelerator. One more. Good job. This was, this was overkill and, um, in the same breath, somewhat completely necessary right now. That little pile of glue that's turned into plastic is still really fragile. And I haven't experienced super glue that is both cured and not cured at the same time. Cause it's also squishy for some reason. And I think that means that there is uncured super glue on the inside. All I did was make a hard shell for the uncured stuff that that's still in there. But so much of it, I either don't need or can't use anyway, because I'm going to make this round again one way or another. And I chose the other, uh, Opal that you, a synthetic opal is a little softer than steel. So you can cut through it like this. This is, it's ill-advised because there's probably uncured super glue in there (laughs) or like really, really, really green super glue that just, uh, it takes, it takes time and you have to be patient. Uh, if anything, this ring has taught me more patience than it has taught me uh, how to make rings. I already knew how to do some of this stuff. I didn't know how to do it better. Uh, but I got, I got the bulk of it off. I have, I have hit it with more accelerator off camera. I've, I've made sure that it's hard enough that this isn't a bad decision. Uh, if it's too soft or say it wasn't the bond for some reason, wasn't good enough. I could fling off two days of waiting into the void and just had to start all over again. It would have taken less time to make this ring from the beginning than it would be to do it the way that I did it. But the way that I did it still kind of worked out cool uh dremel tool dremel sanding disc and opal wear some kind of respirator you don't want to breathe in you don't want to breathe in the amount of dust that that's being kicked up i've already said that i don't particularly like dust all that much but uh for real it uh uh what what did uh i watched a guy named pulitzer opal and uh, he he gently talks about uh, silicosis or silicone particles in the lung basically uh, causing cancer or killing you over time. You don't want it. It's not good. Uh, so more super glue because there are voids in there and this will help fill them in. 
I will stop talking about silicosis. I will hit it with more accelerator, which again should have been waited with patience because even if I'd waited 10 or 20 more minutes, I would have avoided that hot mess. Still, nothing that Sandy can't fix. It's just very frustrating. Uh, I'm going through the same series of emotions that I went through while I was making this, but in a concentrated and very timely manner. Both the catharsis of when something goes right and the feeling of dread when you just do something wrong. And now, now I know what you might be thinking. Um, what are you doing, you absolute maniac? Uh, one, two spinning things next to each other is a fear of mine. That's why I have both hands on my on my uh, Dremel. And I am very calculatedly trying to feel what I'm doing. This isn't completely insane. Completely insane, as uh, more gently pointed out by somebody, was trying to use a handsaw on a moving uh, ring blank. Uh, I, looking back at that, bad move. This, not as bad a move. I had a lot more control. Nothing's going to catch. They're both spinning in perpendicular directions. I felt a little better about it. <laughs> oh, man, every time I say something that I feel a little better about, I watch myself do this, and I know how, it's feel, how it feels and how it looks. It feels way better than it looks. Uh, but this, I'm going very, very gently. I'm just trying to scrape off, like, surface level, uh, whatever might be sticking up. And while it doesn't look super great there, all it really needs is another coat of superglue. You need it sealed in. The scratches fill in with superglue and they become transparent. That's why, that's why that usually works. And if it's, um... If it's a little thicker super glue, it, it, there's more volume to get in there. The liquid stuff will just super glue your hands to the ring again. Cool. The super thin stuff, while it's uh, while it's more, it's more for like getting into every little capillary that it can find its way through. The thick stuff can fill in gaps and stay where it's supposed to stay, even if it's a little vertical or horizontal at the time. It's um. It's usually it, two really good things for two completely different purposes that really don't get exchanged. So, super glue is cured. Everything's in place. Sanding down the ring through the sanding grits. Probably all, if I know me, up to 1500 to 2000. That's usually something that seems like something I'd do. Um... And one of my one of my secrets that I don't know if I have recorded, and it's not really a secret, I just do it. Uh, buffing buffing it with a after the final layer of super glue, buffing it with a paper towel and a micro mesh. But this right here, this right here, when I could see the spinning colors, even even in the lighting, not just in the video, I could see that what I did finally like it worked. <laughs> Essentially, this was this was pretty much what I was going for here, and I'm very happy that it worked out. Of course, there's a little bit of something that has to go wrong, and these two little chip out spots that never really got all the way filled out, I decided to brute force it. Just put a little super glue on there, let it cure on its own, most likely, and then sand it down. That That is all that it really takes. It doesn't take much. Put on some super glue, wait for 10 to 20 minutes, and polish it off. That's not the right phrasing. But did work, or it's going to work. <laughs> and every time you add super glue or you do anything, you always tend to have to redo other steps. Uh, always, like check your sides, get your side, check, check your everything. 
if something is wrong, you're probably going to have to do some of these steps all over again, again, and again, and again, and again. Or, or you do it right the first time, and you avoid you avoid the issues that I've been running into uh, with this ring. And I've 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 made similar rings since this one that have gone just so much better. So valuable experience. Mistakes are a valuable experience. Let's just go with that. Final coat of thin super glue. I believe that's the last one. What are you doing? It's just spinning, man. Thank you. But that, that was it. Uh, in the end, this worked out really well. Um, one of the downsides of using brass, bronze, and copper is it really doesn't matter what you do. It's always going to turn your finger green. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of copper you use either. I learned that too. Uh, there's a particular alloy of copper called terulium copper. It has terulium in it for whatever that's supposed to mean. It's supposed to mean that it keeps your your finger from getting green and it resists corrosion. It absolutely doesn't. That or I'm just very acidic because my finger was green within an hour of wearing just a raw terulium copper ring. Uh, and I digress. Uh, I, I'm rebuffing the inside. I'm cleaning up everything one more time. The sides are polished and the ring is done. Done, done. A pile of mistakes it may be, but it worked. And if something went catastrophically wrong again, if it happened at the very end of it, I could, ju I could just do it again. There's no downside to that. Uh, sometimes if you're spinning your wheels and you feel like you've been doing something over and over and over again, and you're just wondering if it's ever going to get better, stop, start over from the beginning, learn from what you've already done and do it again. That, <laughs> that thought process and that idea has saved me a lot of time, strife and effort. And honestly, it's worth it. So one, thank you for watching, especially if you got this far. Uh, if you've, if you like this kind of stuff, I will keep doing it. Uh, it might take me two weeks. It might take me four months to upload a new video, but I will. So thank you for watching. Uh, and don't mind the man behind the camera. He and I are the same person. And honestly, you've made it this far. So thank you. Get out of the shot. Bye.